times where it must have been a difficult life when uh, the people here were under Indian attacks and they had to make a decision whether to go to Albuquerque to live or to stay up here. But a lot of people chose to stay up here and fight it out. Life got better uh, as time went on. But then, of course, you had developers who wanted the land, which made it as even difficult times as back then. Just uh, fighting a different cause with different people. But back then, uh, there was grazing rights that we still had from up here from the Sandias, which was part of the Carnwell land grant. We never saw any kind of great development through here other than what we see now. Just having it to where it's the water feeding the people and the water feeding the animals. That's basically all we we're all concerned about. Through time, we lost our grazing rights and we had to settle with other things that we had to do. Bootlegging filled the void in 1924. It was corn whiskey made with spring water. No matter how hard the times were or what obstacle hit us at the time, we tend to have found a way to uh, compensate for that. I grew up here in San Antonio. I saw a two-lane highway, very narrow two-lane highway. And as time went on and more developments happened, well, all the decisions were made now of to enlarge the highway to a four-lane highway. And at this time, it started becoming difficult as it even crossing the road. For as more people came up here, uh, it was hard for us to stay in the community and concentrate on the small area that we used to have before. But it has been a big change just in my lifetime, seeing the East Mountain progress as, as, they, as it has. And I, I kind of think that it will progress even more, but more should be uh, set aside on taking care of what's already there the, and the resources that we have to protect first and then look for other solutions uh, later. In 1994, there was a standoff between the Asequia Association and a developer on uh, what to do with this property. It was proposed to go up for development. Um, there, it's an 88 acre property and it was going to be developed into one acre homes. There was no uh, permits that were available at the time for the developer. So we made sure that uh, the bulldozers and tractors were not allowed on the property. It would have destroyed this whole area. The purity of the water would probably be the first to go. The developer tried to control poison ivy with herbicides and it got into the water. He proposed to build a sewage treatment plant that incorporated the Asakia. have been used for a sewage wetlands and the water going back into the stream and going down into the village. They didn't see that the, the pristine use of this water. The developer wanted to build housing on top of the church but Reverend John Carney refused access. There's people that don't appreciate things like this. Uh, it's a dollar sign that actually encourages them to do what they do. The developer finally had, uh, was met with uh, a couple of people with uh, shotguns, uh, one being myself, the other being my brother. And uh, we made sure that uh, the development wasn't to go through. Um, the Aseki Association, however, uh, put a stop to that at, by um, saying that, you know, that was going to interfere with the water and then maintaining that water, which they have legal rights to do so. Uh, these Asekias go under the ancient Asekia law, and pretty much the, the law just states these Asekias shall not be disturbed. 
And so when the developer was no longer able to access the water, it kind of thwarted his plans. We're not worried about developers anymore. And the community wanted to see it protected so that it would protect those uh, cultural and natural resources and that uh, living history that is uh, still existing on the property today. We have a really unique but wonderful partnership with the Asecki Association there who is the legal body that manages and maintains the um, Asecchia, which provides water to nearby community and have been doing so um, since, from my understanding, the 1700s. We purchased the property in uh, 1998 through a mill levy and uh, now we uh, maintain it but always in cooperation and partnership with local citizens and groups. Because only together it will, it will stay preserved. Uh, the land goes with the water, the water goes with the land. We all have to work as stewards to take care of this water together. Not just one individual can take on the responsibility. It's, it needs to be taken care of by all of us. So we all learn to enjoy our acequias and, and protect our acequias. It should last for several more generations to come. Well, open space in general is all about the protection of land from development. And, um, you know, one of our, our vision statements or the, uh, the properties that we look to protect have some kind of historical, cultural, and environmental significance to them. And what makes uh, San Antonio is so special is that it has all three of those components. It's got the environmental uh, component with especially the water, the history of the orchard, and the wildlife component. The San Antonio church site, that is actually one of the oldest uh, villages within this area. So the fact that we are able to preserve this today for future generations and that it's a place that today the public can go to enjoy uh, by walking along the hiking trails and um, learning about the birds in the area, the wildflowers, and all those things make it an ideal open space property that really helps to uh, increase the overall uh, quality of health for our entire community and I think that the community acknowledges and appreciates that. In order to properly uh, manage and maintain it, we really need help from the community. We can't do it alone and, and we are getting help and so that's a real grateful thing and that's why partnerships are really important.